Okay, uh, so now we have learned the database. Um, so there are two types of data analytics. One is called OLTP and also one is called OLAP. So OLTP stands for the online transaction processing. So that means normally they will involve a lot of users and it's normally to use to save the operational data. And data is maintained uh, for relatively short term. So for example, uh, several weeks or several months. Um, because there are a lot of users and also there are a lot of insert, update, etc. So you have to need a very robust uh, service infrastructure to handle that OLTP, so online transaction processing. And one example is that, is that you can think about like say, um, the banking system so that uh, if there's a database that we have millions of users that they uh, deposit money and also they withdraw money. So each single record, each single action, so every of those single action will result in some records that have been created in the banking system. And if you think there are so many users that are doing those records all over the world, so it has been very, very robust. Okay. And our relational database, our relational uh, database is ideal to handle OLTP. And there's another type of the data analytics that is called online analytical processing. Okay, uh, so this, for example, that uh, uh, still that we see the banking system. So we have those users that uh, withdraw money and also in deposit money, generate those re records. We also need to analyze those records. So let's say that we want to, um, we may not to update that very frequently. So probably we want to have a result that every week, so that every week we want to see that the aggregated result, see that which user uh, deposits the most amount of money, which user withdraws the most amount of money. And also, do they have any, uh, so who can be our potential clients for, let's say, we want to um, advertise our credit cards. So that will involve a very complicated queries. See, we might join uh, multiple tables uh, together. That's the user information, uh, transaction uh, records, uh, etc. Okay. And we may need to handle those data that store those data for a very long time. So let's say uh, 50 years or 100 years or five, uh, five years. So depending on how long your business exists. OK, so that we can check the historic data and also we can um, identify that how we can identify some users. We send out those advertisement. All that how we how is a uh, how is uh, our bank is making profit, and normally there will be only few users that need uh, to access this data resource. So not all the uh, customers or clients need to access uh, the, this data source. Probably just uh, analytics, uh, um, all the uh, employers in that bank. So that who need to handle those. Um, uh, or intelligence analysis that to need to access uh, those data source. So we just need fewer users and that actually need consolidated data. So uh, we normally don't care about a single transaction, but we care about, let's say, a very is aggregated data or, or a joint data from multiple resources. And in that case, traditional relational data, database is not able to handle those complicated queries. Okay, so because traditional relational database isn't powerful enough and is not designed for this scenario. So that is why we have the data warehouse or data warehousing. So data warehouse is the place that you can consolidate or you can integrate your data into a single source. So the idea is that, for example, you, uh, if you have a relational databases, 
like a banking system, and you go through this e, um, ETL process, so that extract, transform, and load process, and you put all the data into our data warehouse. Okay, so those are the relational database. Okay, all the other type of resources, not all, not necessary to be a relational database. So other type of data resources, and then we go through this ETL process and we aggregate or integrate all the data to our data warehouse. So data warehouse is ideally used for OLAP and for data mining and also for reporting. So especially that data warehouse is suitable to be connected to our uh, BI tools, so business intelligence analytic tools that you can generate reports, say weekly report or monthly report. Okay. So it's it great for consolidation and it is uh, isolated from other data resource. Um, consistency is also another benefit, although relational database is all must, uh, also has this feature. And also um, data warehouse has high performance. And we all see that one later, so why it has high performance. Uh, so let's take the Redshift as an example. So Redshift is a, is a solution that Amazon provided. It's highly scalable and high performance data storage in the cloud. The reason that it is uh, has high performance because it in enables the massive parallel so that um, you don't have only one instance to perform the queries. Actually, you have multiple instances that are running the queries in parallel. So that's why it is super fast. Uh, Redshift is also for relational data. Uh, it's based on the relational data, so that all the data are stored um, with in the tables, and also we can join table together based on foreign keys and also primary keys. It is also fully managed, so that you don't need to worry about infrastructure. Uh, it is in the cloud. Uh, you can use is HDD or SSD. Mm, hardware, so of course SSD will be more faster and also more expensive. The architecture of Redshift is that it has not only one single instance, so it actually is a cluster of instances. Okay, so it is uh, infra infrastructure is that it has a leader node, which contains a mentor data, and also is used to coordinate um, the process. And the data is stored on those multiple computer node. Okay, the data is stored uh, on those multiple computer node. And when you need to design, uh, execute query, you send out the uh, the command to the leader node. Actually, it is still SQL commands because that is based on re relational data. And the leader node knows that for each single node, what data they have stored. So they will send. They will divide the query into sub queries, and so each computer node will just make queries on um, part uh, that on that node. Okay, and once it has the result returned, and it will return to the leader node, and leader node will return the result to the client. Okay, so you can see that the the. The Redshift is a cluster of the uh, instances of the computers. Uh, it can run the query in parallel. So that's why it can provide high performance than uh, the RDS, which is the cloud database we mentioned earlier. So if we compare the relational database and also data warehouse, so relational database has been widely used. Okay. Uh, it is one of the most widely used database nowadays, still nowadays. Uh, it has very great transaction latency. So that means you insert data and also that data will be committed immediately. It is ideal for online transaction. However, uh, it is hard to scale your data so that, uh, so for example, if when you have the instance, if you, you want to um, make the instance, instance to be more powerful, you need to buy a more 
expensive instance. Uh, it has fixed schema. Here, the schema means the structure so that and also it needs vertical scaling so that if you want uh, need more storage or more performance, you need just need to buy a, a, a more expensive hardware. For the data warehouse, it is fast for data retriever so that if you want to make a query like if you want to join tables, join multiple tables together, and data warehouse will be very faster and can resolve inconsistency because it is through the ETL process. And it is better for intelligence, uh, business intelligence, so that great for the BI analytic tools. However, it is expensive because it is a cluster of the uh, DB instances. Um, it needs uh, additional security concerns, so let's say how you communicate within those uh, clusters. And also it is very complicated. It's, it's also a little bit complicated to maintain because again, the, uh, the, the compl complexity of the technical part. However, this one, data warehouse, so if you want to make your data warehouse be, to be more powerful, you can just add in more instance to your cluster. So add in more computer nodes. Okay, still you have one uh, leader nodes. Okay, you can just by adding more computer nodes uh, to, uh, to increase the performance of your data warehouse. 